Howdy mates, good afternoon. Here's a part three video over at the Hillsborough River State Park. So we have a chance to walk along the bank here. At least it's a little spot where I had to climb down the uh, ledge there. But the particular reason why I wanted to make this video was to point out a particular invasive plant that is found commonly among Florida's streams. So I figure it's best to give it a little bit of attention. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so just along here, we've got this particular plant right here. See these with their prominent leaves? Well, at first thought, you may be thinking that it is an elephant ear, but rather that's not necessarily the case. Rather instead, this is actually something known as a wild taro, T-A-R-O. Now, granted, both elephant's ear and wild taro belong to the Aram family. So that essentially means that they both form extensive roots. Now, that being said, given that wild taro is an invasive plant, it is originally from parts of India, Africa, and Southeast Asia. That's where its original native range is located. So, it was brought over because cultivators believed that it could be used as a substitute for potatoes. It was, they wanted to use it as a substitute for those who were slaves back in the 1800s. So, then the question that comes to mind is how can you really tell the difference between a wild taro and an elephant's ear? Well, it all has to do with the leaf. So, as you can see, we've got a pretty prominent leaf, but the thing is, all plants have a particular feature known as a petiole. That's essentially where the stalk, or I should say the stem, meets with the leaf. So with wild taro, there you have the direct base, but then you have a little bit of this, this space right here. See that? But unlike with elephant's ear, you know, you still have that same petiole, but rather there is no, there's no material here. It's, it just forms a, like, yeah, there's no, there's no space whatsoever. So think of it this way. Remove this little uh, greenery right here. So instead follow this particular pattern. So that is how you can actually tell the difference between the two. Now, if you are handling this plant, you know, removing the roots and whatnot, and, actually, and having the plant broken open, gotta be careful though, if you're exposed to it. It is known to have oxalic acid, which is a particular chemical commonly used in rust removers, for example. It's a, it's basically a colorless uh, chemical upon when it hits solution. So, oxalic acid acts as an irritant when exposed to our skin. In other words, it also acts as a bleach, but without the actual bleaching like that you would see on clothes 
So it is difficult to remove given that they do form an extensive root system. So it is one of those deals where, sure, you can remove them, but the thing is, I believe their roots are also rhizomatic, so they can actually spread quite easily. Because as you can see, they are appearing in clusters. I mean, heck, we've even got one up here as well. So because of that, you know, when I say rhizomatic that just simply means the roots intertwine with one another between all of the plants and so when that happens it's really difficult to eliminate that network so it's one of those things like you really have to be persistent with it because if you aren't it's just simply going to grow right back almost as if you were never even working on it so just something worth noting but they do like moist soil so that's why you will see them quite frequently along riverbanks so just keep that in mind whenever you see this plant just know that it is unfortunately an invasive plant that can crowd out other native plants from growing. And actually right here, got an interesting native plant. This is a swamp dock. I believe this actually is a native variety, if I'm not mistaken. Of course I will clarify on that. I'm not as familiar with the dock family. Not referring to uh not referring to Doc from Back to the Future, of course. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, all right, you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something of value. And once again, journey on a journey is onwards. Take care, folks. See ya.